Welcome to the first behind the scenes breakdown of one of our productions. Yeah, so we're out here <laughs> shooting our short film Rabbit Hole. Funny, spectacular. So fast and hard with Nike shoes. This one's going to be of Rabbit Hole, which is a recent short that we made for Easter. It all sort of started when we had a commercial book which needed an Easter Bunny outfit. And um, the commercial actually fell through, but we were left with an Easter Bunny outfit in a couple of days. And so we decided to do something with it. We all sort of sat down at the table and had a chat about what we wanted to do with the project and how much money to put behind it. And I think we all sort of agreed that we wanted to do a couple more of these projects over the next 12 months. And so it might have been a good idea to keep the budgets down. One of the biggest challenges that we face with this project is working with a very minimal production budget as well as a very short production timeline. We only had five days from conceptualizing the idea to having a finished film ready for Easter. And so a lot of the pre-production had to happen with the crew in mind and we had to sort of plan our lighting setups, camera angles and camera package for the crew size that we had. From a pre-production standpoint, we just needed to find the right location, which is one of the most important things when working on a very minimal production budget. Now, being a production company, we were very fortunate having a lot of our own equipment and lighting, so we didn't have to hire any of that out. That meant that we could keep the production costs really low and keep it pretty much down to just art department. Now, we already had a bunny outfit ready to go. 80 whole dollars from Snoggy Frog. Go there now to buy all your Snoggy Froggy needs. And so we just had to find some Easter eggs, which was actually quite hard to find leading up to Easter as well as um, one of the baskets, which was surprisingly hard to find because it was misplaced in the store. And we needed sort of like a specific look um, for, the, for the reveal shot. <laughs> that on the back is so funny <laughs> to me. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Scott, the writer-director of Rabbit Hole, uh, the short film that is being produced or has been produced by Oakville Films greatest film production company in the world. So, so the fact that we only had one week to write, shoot and edit this film, uh, the expectation was that it wasn't going to be amazing. You know, you, you, it's very hard to write something um, beautiful and short in a week's time. Josh tries to leave, the Easter Bunny shoots out an extra arm. An extra arm? <laughs> <laughs> Third arm comes up from his back, grabs him, shoots out. <laughs> It gave less pressure to the situation and it was easier for us to just get going with it and trust our intuition and our instincts uh, and our um, expertise to, to make it all happen. You need to get the 45 of me offering the eggs. Offering. So we're jumping forward. So that's actually me back here. No, sorry, me here. Hi, I'm Dartu. I shot and produced Rabbit Hole, our three minute Easter short film. So with the visual style of Rabbit Hole, um, we wanted to take on the approach of going handheld, getting that sort of uh, uh, rough around the edges, gritty, sort of wet down, running at 3am aesthetic. We had a bunch of rain hit us earlier in the day um, and that really helped us with that natural wet down without having to bring any water on set. With this project we knew that we wanted to shoot low light and given that we had just purchased the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, we knew that would be the right camera for the job. On set, we had an easy rig to make it a little bit easier for me to get that natural handheld look. So when shooting handheld with a tighter focal length, you tend to notice more of the micro jitters on screen. So the way that we wanted to offset that was to create a little bit more weight onto the camera itself. What we had to do was kit it out, add some monitors, handles, V-lock plates, just to really give it that natural weight so when it comes to blocking a scene, you're kind of at the mercy of the location. I wanted something wide so we could shoot, like like long so I could shoot on a, um, a higher focal length. So we found this location and it was already pre-lit with street lights and industrial lights. So the blocking obviously has to work with that because you can't just say, all right, I'm gonna have the character stand here and then the lighting look garbage. And then you're, you're working over time to make that work so the background works. So me and Datsu got in there and we found several little spots around that area that we really liked. The, the script was like dialogue heavy, so I, I didn't write much of actions and physical movements in there because we hadn't found the location at that point. Uh, so a lot of it was trying to figure out how we can keep the, the scenes moving without their sort of being just standing, talking back and forth because that always ends up being really dry and stale. You gotta give motivation for characters to do certain movements and we found 
little bits in the dialogue that helped motivate certain certain movements, like when the bunny bounces off the wall. There's nah, mate, you got it all wrong. Nah, mate, you got it all wrong. All that sort of stuff you find out on the day through blocking, and that really just sort of helps ease the scenes along um, and makes it feel more engaging. So after our location scout, we discovered a nice corner in one of the uh, main industrial areas in Marrickville. When we discovered that corner, I knew I wanted to shoot um, down the alleyway into the vanishing point. My first thoughts when I walked onto the location was that it was naturally lit on both axes of the corner. And I knew that there would be a natural color contrast for both sides of each character. So what we wanted to do was just enhance what we had there on set. It was super minimal. We had one key light, the Aperture 300X, that was bicolor. So we could choose if we wanted to go with the daylight white color versus the tungsten warm colors. On top of that, we brought some smaller lights that were also bicolor, the Aperture MCs and the Astera tubes. So we had that versatility. We had chose to enhance the natural color contrast. And with that natural teal and orange look, you get more of a dynamic image. Sounds fading. So one of the challenges that we faced with Josh's reverse was the natural street light that was spilling all over him. Now it was front lit and it was all flat and mostly it was visually inconsistent with the rest of the film. So what we did is we set a bunch of flags to cut off some of that unwanted light and off screen we had motivated some of the street lamps that were along the alleyway with the 300x dome and grid just to really accentuate and to get that side backlit CD grungy vibe. Are you gonna stab me? On the day we knew we wanted to create a little bit more long-winded tracking shots with the handheld look. We came up with some questionable methods. <laughs> So I jumped in and thought on the spot how we can mitigate that unwanted jitters of running along with the camera. So what we did was we used the director's car and had me sticking out of it just to get the opening shot. And to also get that really tight push-in shot to reveal what the bunny wants. We just wrapped up the project um, where everything went well. We managed to dodge quite a bit of rain, but um, yeah, I'm glad we finished it. So I'm just de-rigging the gear and doing some data. Now we knew we'd be working with quite a small crew and that meant that we couldn't have any extravagant lighting setups or have too much gear on set because everyone sort of had to wear multiple hats on that day. So we managed to bring it all together and the total cost of the production was $178, which I think is a pretty good effort. I just wanted to preface that with, we do own a lot of our own equipment being a production company. And so if you were out doing this yourself, you'd probably have to consider how much it would cost to rent the cameras and the lighting.